Hello, my name is Vaikuntan Rajaratnam. Today I'm going to talk about the fixation of difficult intraarticular fractures in the digits. They pose a challenge because of the nature of the anatomy of the structures around these fracture fragments and the difficulty in trying to bring about reduction and early mobilization with a stable fixation device they require a high level of expertise and requiring special uh, implants that are small enough and instrumentation to bring about open reduction internal fixation. The treatment goals are fairly straightforward. The whole aim of intraarticular fracture fixation is to produce anatomical alignment of the joint and hold the reduction stable enough and long enough to allow for early active mobilization so as to return the patient to the pre-injury state in the shortest possible time. This paper by Stern and Roman did elaborate on the fact that these are difficult small fragments resulting in high complication and reduce the ability to gain joint congruency. This is a serious problem that when you try to attempt to produce joint congruity in the small fragment by an open reduction internal fixing technique, you can fail and make the outcome worse than what it was without surgery. And achieving open reduction and internal fixation in these cases sometimes are not possible and especially in severely comminuted subchondral fragments are almost impossible and may be unnecessary. And here we go back to the old Watson uh, concept of a mesh of bones and the best part is early mobilization to help contour them. And so therefore ORIF can cause extensive soft tissue disruption leading to avascularity of fragments and producing joint stiffness and even to the point of painful stiffness and I have had patients that may require amputation at the end of it. These challenges therefore has led to the development of the ligamental taxis and to maintain ligamental taxis to bring about a reduction that is satisfactory and that allow for early mobilization. This is the principle of dynamic traction, external traction to help in the healing of intraarticular fractures. And we are familiar with the dynamic traction as originally proposed by Suzuki. The aim of ligamental taxis is to achieve reduction by applying a longitudinal traction along the long axis of the digit and this will only work as long as the fragments of bone are connected by the soft tissues that's the ligamental taxis any attempt to dissect especially during open reduction ligamental taxis become impossible because there are no structures to produce the long uh, axial loading uh, or sorry distraction some form of traction is best for indirect reduction we will today look at the indications, the design, the techniques and complications of the Suzuki frame. This technique I am about to describe is the Hank Gideon modification of the original Suzuki frame, which is rubber bands. Here we use two KYs, 1.1 mm in size to bring about longitudinal distraction of the fracture fragment, i.e. ligamental taxis, through the device and then encourage early mobilization and this would help in the rehabilitation. Here we have a couple of uh, papers that were produced by the Birmingham Hand Center on this uh, very device which is the Heinz Giddens modified version of the dynamic external fixator of Suzuki and uh, we have both uh, produced a clinical paper and the biomechanical analysis to the distraction force. Here you have the results that we have uh, published in the, one of the papers showing how the distractive uh, device was able to produce distraction at the fracture side which can be clearly seen following the application of the uh, Suzuki frame that there is a distraction of the joint space and uh, the clinical results are pretty obvious uh, which is quite good uh, at the end of the day with an injury of this nature. Here's another case of the Suzuki frame uh, showing distraction of the proximal interphalangeal joint and fracture dislocation uh, and allowing for early mobilization. Uh, this is a closed procedure and there's no opening of the fracture. There is a uh, defect in the chondral surface. This which be filled up by fibrocartilage and produce reasonably good results in a simple procedure and I doubt that in the 
not so technically complicated at hand, an open reduction internal fixation by, for example, a buttress place on the volar surface may be more of a disaster than a uh, desirable outcome. We will now look at the technique of doing uh, the Suzuki frame. This can be done under a digital block requiring no GA. You require a power uh, source to drive a 1.1 millimeter K wire and uh, you need the longish K wires because they need to be bent and cut. The most important part of the first procedure is to ensure that the pin that is transversely running across the head of the metacarpus uh, sorry, the head of the proximal phalanx is sighted at the appropriate site as can be shown in this lateral radiograph. You have to have it central and uh, uh, this will be the motion of axis of the PIP joint. Uh, it is easily thought that the center is more dorsal and, uh, and this would produce uh, abnormal stress in the PIP joint. Remember that the center of the joint in the head of the metacarpus is more volar than you think. This is important to be located under fluoroscopy and to make sure that the K wire is at wide angle to the long axis of the proximal phalanx and is parallel to the floor. The second wire is inserted parallel to the first wire in the neck of the middle phalanx, again preferably in the midpoint. It is not as crucial to be anywhere as long as it is uh, parallel to the first K wire. Any loss of parallelism will bring about angulation and rotational deformity at the fracture side. Once this is done, the next phase is to bend both of the parallel wires as shown, and this is done by the AO uh, pliers, which can bend them at right angles. Ensure that the distance of the right angle bend is sufficient from the skin, otherwise, if there's any swelling, especially in the PIP joint, this can cut into the K wire. The distal wire then is bent with the knee just about a centimeter proximal to the first transverse wire as can be shown here and this is then used to hook to the transverse wire. The transverse wire that is in the proximal uh, phalanx has been bent 90 degrees ready to be crimped once we lock the distal wire. The amount of distraction can be controlled by the angle of the knee in the distal wire. Here you can see the pliers being used to hook the distal wire that has been bent onto the proximal wire under tension. Uh, as you can see that it's been done on the opposite side and once this is done this will produce the necessary dynamic distraction of the proximal interphalangeal joint. And here you can see the finished Suzuki frame showing the distraction of the proximal interphalangeal joint by the bend of the distal wire and the uh, hooking of the proximal uh, wire and the distal wire together by crimping the edges and this allows it to be stable. Ensure this is done, otherwise the patient, this frame will disengage itself and it will end up in a &E requiring your attention. Here we see a case of eight weeks post fracture dislocation of the PIP joint treated by the Suzuki frame showing reasonably good results. This will improve with time at the end of three month period and we get optimal results. I think this is a good alternative in the right hands uh, where difficult intraarticular fractures uh, for treatment by open reduction or internal fixation. Thank you.